you take your Bibles and turn with me to Mark chapter 14. As I shared, we're going to begin uh, from now uh, to up till Easter Sunday. My messages are going to kind of deal with some events and moments that took place during what we call Passion Week. Uh, that's the week uh, prior to uh, Jesus' crucifixion, or from the triumphal entry on. And uh, I'm not going to uh, share a message relative to the triumphal entry, but the very next day, uh, an event that took place, a very personal event, but was also something that took place publicly. And, and it's, it's something that we can, uh, an example that we can learn a lot from uh, in, in our own walk with the Lord. And uh, as I said, then we'll be looking at some of the other events uh, over the next uh, uh, couple weeks. And then on Good Friday, uh, we'll have our communion celebration, Good Friday of Easter weekend. There'll be the egg hunt that Saturday morning. And then, of course, the Resurrection Sunday uh, we'll be celebrating and uh, uh, culminating with a, a very special uh, a resurrection message uh, uh, for that day. But uh, we need to understand there were significant events that took place. Uh, again, the, the world didn't realize uh, that Jesus was about to be crucified. Uh, we're going to see in, in this passage in Mark uh, uh, chapter 14 uh, that, uh, uh, that there was an individual who had some type of discernment because she anointed Jesus, and that's Mary. And uh, we're going we're gonna to just see, uh, uh, again, what, what that represented and, and, again, some lessons that we can learn from it. And so we want to begin here with Mark chapter 14, 1 through 9. So would you please stand with me as we read these nine verses, Mark chapter 14, that uh, establishes the setting of, uh, again, something very personal, something very public that took place on this day, the first day of Passion Week. It says, Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. And they, they had been scheming that way for some time. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She, told, she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of of her. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, as we make preparations even now, Lord, for Easter, uh, Lord, as we uh, prepare our hearts, as we uh, just seek you with all of our hearts, Lord, that, uh, Lord, we would experience uh, your revelation, we'd experience your power. Lord, I pray through this passage and through the example of Mary and the things that you said, Lord, help us to learn. Help us to learn how we can worship you, how we can serve you, how we can uh, just anoint you uh, with our lives and with our praise. So, Lord, bless now this, your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, the setting that we have here, it's, it's a really, it's an awesome setting of, of what's taking place for, uh, for a while now, the religious leaders, the authorities there, the, the, the scribes, uh, the chief priests, the Pharisees, uh, the, the individuals who, uh, who, who disagreed often were in agreement they wanted to get rid of Jesus. You know, I guess it would almost be like the, the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, combining on, uh, on, on something where they were in agreement. But, but they, they were scheming, it, and, and, and we see here uh, in the midst of that, we see this incident, this moment that, that takes place. And, and, and we're, we're, you need to understand that 
They were intensifying their efforts. They were strategizing. They, they, they were still scheming, it says, uh, but they, uh, they, their, their plans... Uh, the, their, their plans were being thwarted and, and, and stymied, and, and they were underestimating things about Jesus and, uh, and the, the people. I mean, they, they had just witnessed the triumphal entry. They had just witnessed uh, a reaction uh, by the multitudes for Jesus just arriving in Jerusalem. It wasn't anything that was planned. It, it was spontaneous as Jesus walked into Jerusalem, how the people reacted. And so they, 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 they had grossly underestimated uh, the, the impact that the Lord was having. And so uh, they, they said, hey, we need to hold off here. We, 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 we need to hold off. We, uh, you know, the, the, the people are, uh, are, are following Jesus. They're worshiping him. Uh, and even in that, they, were, uh, they just didn't, they, they didn't know what to do. But we need to understand uh, that the God's plan was being accomplished according to God's details. And, and so where, where they were confused, they didn't know what to do, they, they were trying to plan, how can we do this? How can we arrest him? How can we uh, get... And, and then, then unexpectedly, they got some help from one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, approached them and, and said that, uh, that he, would, uh, he, he, he would lead... Jesus into their hands. And so, uh, and so even in the midst of this fe- the festival of the Passover, uh, where they said, no, let's not do this now, they, they, they took that turn. But again, we need to understand, it was God bringing about everything to be accomplished because it was his plan that he had sent his son to, to die on the cross and that the Passover uh, was, that, was that appointed time with the, 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 the lamb uh, that was, uh, uh, was slain to put the blood on the, uh, the, the doorpost and the mantle, and that Jesus, the Son of God, was going to be the Lamb of God. And so it's all according to God's, uh, God's plan here, and we, we see how, how, how uh, uh, really he was, using, he was using the chief priests and the religious uh, leaders of that time. But uh, uh, with, with, uh, with all that going on behind the scenes, that, that those schemes... There was something very significant that was going to take place personally and publicly, an act of devotion that we can learn from here. Uh, we see this as a public place at the house of Simon the leper. It involves Mary. Now, she wasn't named uh, such in Mark's gospel, but we know this was Mary, that in this house of Simon the leper, uh, that uh, uh, we know that uh, Lazarus uh, uh, was there, the, 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 risen, uh, the, the risen dead man, the, uh, the man that Jesus had, had ri- uh, risen from the dead. And then we have here Mary, this woman, and she has an alabaster jar. And, and it's an expensive perfume. Uh, it's, a pure, it's pure ointment uh, of, of spike nard, all right, uh, from India. This, this particular ointment, this per- particular perfume, uh, was made, and the reason was called the alabaster jar, was because it, it was made in alabastrum, Egypt. And again, the, uh, the, 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 the ointment, the spike nard, came from India. It, it, was, uh, uh, it, it was manufactured, if you will, uh, there. And uh, the jar was made out of stone from uh, the mountains and was of the most expensive ointment. This was an oil. Uh, this was a uh, as it's called the spike nard, that was used for kings. It was used by kings. It was that expensive. And, and, and that when it was used, it was literally only used one drop at a time. One drop at a time. But here uh, we have Mary, and, and we, we, again, we, we don't know where she, uh, where she uh, uh, obtained uh, uh, this particular alabaster jar, uh, but we do know by the reaction of those present uh, that it was very expensive, that it was a, a year's, a year's wages, a year's wages. And, and so we know that uh, uh, tradition uh, and, and Bible scholars have indicated that uh, uh, this alabaster jar, this particular ointment, uh, would go for about 300 denarii per jar. And again, one denarii was the average wage for a day. Well, again, those are just some details to, uh, to just understand what Mary was doing, the act of devotion that Mary was, uh, was performing upon Jesus. It was a personal act uh, 
uh, that, that was done in, in front of many people that were there that day uh, for this particular dinner. And, and of course, uh, we see the reaction. We see the reaction here that, uh, that said some present were saying indignantly uh, to one another. Now, uh, you know, they were murmuring to one another. Now, another word for that, they were gossiping. They were gossiping, right? And, and, and then they even rebuked her directly. They rebuked her harshly. But we see here Jesus commends her generous offering. He says, leave her alone. And, and he commends her generous offering and affirms her devotion and sacrifice. Now, the things I want to highlight here today as we look at this, uh, there's been many messages about this passage. It's also uh, found in, in, in Matthew and, and, and Luke as well. But uh, the things I want to highlight here are the three statements that Jesus made concerning Mary. There's three statements he directed toward her. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to look at them in reverse order. And so the very first statement, the very first statement that Jesus makes of Mary is, uh, is that what she has done will also be told. In verse 9, he says, what she has done will also be told. And he says this in relation to the gospel. He says, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told. Well, okay, that's why we have it in God's word. It's in the gospels, what Mary did. And, and, and we need to understand that as the good news of the gospel, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and, and, and as he was born, and as he ministered, and as he went to the cross, and as he rose again, everything about the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, that Jesus said, what she did will be told also. Would be told also. And that her example of devotion, and the worship, and the ministry uh, of, her, uh, of her actions unto the Lord. And so we need to understand from this, what, what's Jesus saying? He, he's saying that, that when we worship and when we minister, that, that the Lord notices and it will be remembered. It will be remembered. Any, any act of devotion. You know, and, and, and so uh, we see that statement that Jesus made of Mary. Well, now, again, going in reverse order, the second statement that Jesus makes of Mary is simply this, she did what she could. She did what she could. Verse 8. Verse 8. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. And we need to understand, it's, it's that idea. We, we are called to do what we can, to worship the Lord uh, however we can, uh, you know, whether it's singing, uh, whether it's service, uh, if it's prayer, if it's intercession for, you know, to, uh, a personal act. This is what this is. Simply, it's a personal act. She did what she could. And we need to understand the Lord notices when we do what we can to worship him. And, 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 and that, you know, she didn't put, she didn't have anybody go in her place. She, 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 uh, uh, she didn't, you know, give, 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 give uh, this perfume to a, a servant and say, hey, uh, go and anoint Jesus. She, in the midst of this, this multitude, uh, this house full uh, of people, uh, and, and again, uh, they're filled with the disciples, probably filled with some of the, uh, the chief priests that were there. We don't know who all was there. But she, in the midst of that place, personally went and did what she could to an, just anoint Jesus, anoint Jesus with this. Uh, and again, we see that uh, we, we see that the, the Lord said it was for a specific purpose. You know, again, probably lost, again, probably lost in all of what was going on. Here, Jesus again prophesies that his, his burial. He's she's preparing me for my burial. Well, that means there's going to be his death. And, and so again, but she did what she could. And then, then the, 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 the third statement, or the, actually the first one in that order, but going, you know, what, what did she do? What, 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 what did Jesus say? What did she do? She has done a beautiful thing to me, Jesus said. To begin with, Jesus said, she has done a beautiful thing to me. It's in verse 6 there. You know, he said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering? She has done a beautiful 
thing to me. She said, I mean, just what an exclamation. She has done a beautiful thing to me. Now, we need to understand this word beautiful, it, 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 it's, it's, it goes even further. The, the Greek word here uh, for, for beautiful that we have in uh, the, the, the text, uh, it, it's, it speaks of uh, Mary's beautiful thing was an extravagant giving. It was extravagant. It was a sacrifice. Uh, it, it was something that, uh, you know, uh, was a great sacrifice, a costly sacrifice. A little, I'm going to lose some power here. It was, a, it, it, it was extra. The key is ex- extra. It, it, was, it was beyond ordinary. It, it was extraordinary. It was beyond normal. It was extravagant. Now, let's understand, you know, when... when when, when you want to do something uh, special for somebody, when, 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 when you want, want to do something, you know, and sometimes we say, we, you know, we, we, we go the extra mile. We go uh, uh, extravagantly means is to just do something completely out of the ordinary. This is special. This is special. Maybe a couple, uh, you know, uh, on their anniversary, you know, they, uh, you know, they, 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 they give themselves a, a special trip. Again, they've, they've saved up or, or, or you know, to, to, to bless some, uh, somebody on their special day. Uh, you know, you, you go beyond. And it, that's, what, that's what Jesus said she did. She has done a beautiful, extravagant thing to me, something beyond the norm. Something beyond, uh, you know, the daily, uh, the, the daily routine. And, and, and you know, just we, we need to see this example of extravagance. And, again, the reaction of the, those around, th- th- this, is, this is a waste. They recognize it. This is, this is ex- extravagant. This is a waste. It's, it's not necessary. Why, why, why did she do this? But Jesus highlights it. And so, again, what, what can we learn about extravagant giving from Mary's example? What can we learn uh, about how we can live our life uh, not extravagantly for ourselves, but extravagantly so that uh, we, honor, we honor the Lord? Well, first of all, three things here quickly. Extravagant giving is adoration. It's adoration. Pure and simple. It's loving the Lord with all again, you know, it, it's we need to understand it's not enough to just have faith in Jesus and to believe in Him and, and to believe that He died and rose again. But God, from the very beginning, has called upon us to love Him. He says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and strength." And that that word, all, that's what we need to understand. It's extravagant giving is all of our adoration, that we adore the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, and we don't stop, but we adore him. You know, we need to understand Jesus is not here for us to anoint him like Mary. So, so how, how, how do we give extravagantly to the Lord? How, how do we adore him? Well, by our praise, by our obedience, by our service, that we direct toward him and, and that we, we, we love and minister, we, if you will, anoint others. We anoint others. We adore others when we love the Lord with all of our heart and our souls. We love them. We, you know, the, 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 the first and greatest commandment is love the Lord. The second one is love your neighbor as yourself. And so we need to understand adoration Extravagant giving is about adoring the Lord, loving him, and loving others. The second example that uh, we can see here, the, the second thing we can learn about extravagant living, uh, ex- extravagant giving, extravagant giving is anticipation. You say, well, what do you mean anticipation? When we, when we give, uh, when we give our life, when we serve the Lord with all that we have, it, it, it's, there's an anticipation there. Uh, yes, you know, we see, we see a need. There's a moment there. There's an opportunity there. And, and so we, uh, we minister to that need. We minister to that opportunity. But we need to understand it's all in anticipation that God's kingdom is coming. God's kingdom is coming. And, and that everything that we do, everything uh, that, that uh, every act that we, we, we do right now is in anticipation of that. 
Now, when we're told in the scripture that Mary prepared Jesus for his death and burial, when, he, when, when she anointed him, that, that, that Jesus, by his own words, says, she is preparing me for burial. For burial. Well, okay, again, Jesus isn't here for us to anoint him, but what, what is it that we're preparing what is it that we're preparing him for? When, 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 we, uh, when we give extravagantly, when we adore him, when, when we serve him, when we, uh, when we love others and we serve others, what are we preparing for? We're preparing for his return. We're preparing for his return. And so, again, every, that's the anticipation. We are anticipating his return. We're preparing for his return. And so we are to be giving extravagantly. Giving extra, giving beyond uh, uh, the uh, uh, our even our ability, uh, begin, be, giving beyond what's even necessary. We 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 need to uh, pursue what we how we can do extra. And then thirdly, extravagant giving is acknowledgement. It's acknowledgement. We need to understand everything, every act, every word. Uh, every, every moment we live is, needs to be an acknowledgement of Jesus, that, that he is our Lord, he's our master, we are his servant. Uh, the, the, the disciples called themselves bond servants uh, because they were acknowledging who they were and who Jesus was, that he was the master and they were the servants. And they were bond servants. Bond servants were uh, those individuals uh, that they were, they, they, it wasn't mandatory that, that they had to serve but they wanted to serve. The bond servants were the servants who uh, had, had, had met their requirement, had either the length of time or, or had even, uh, had even uh, uh, saved up so that they bought their redemption. But they said, we're, we're free, but we are still going to serve our master. We are still going to serve our master, and that's how the disciples referred themselves as, as bond servants. And so extravagant giving is, is acknowledgement. Why do we give? Uh, you know, we, not to acknowledge ourselves, but to acknowledge who Jesus is. But we also know that as we acknowledge him, that he will acknowledge us. He will acknowledge us. So uh, get, bringing this to a close here, Why? Do I want to give extravagantly? What, you know, the application here, what, what can we take uh, from, from this, uh, this occasion, from this, this event that took place the first day uh, of, of the, uh, the pa Passion Week, the, uh, the, after the triumphal entry and, and leading to uh, Jesus going to the cross? Why do I want to give extravagantly? First of all, number one, because giving destroys envy and covetousness. And we need to understand, it is our nature to envy. It is our nature to covet. This is what was going on with everybody else in that house that day, amongst the disciples, uh, amongst the, uh, the individuals uh, that were there, Simon himself. Uh, and again, the, uh, uh, this is what was going on. They, there was envy. There was covetousness. That, you know, and we need to understand, uh, individuals not giving sacrificially, if they're not giving sacrificially, they're usually giving criticism. All right? That, that's kind of, that, 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 that's a bold statement. I'm not going to apologize for it. But if we're not giving sacrificially, then we're giving something, and it's usually criticism and gossip of other people. It's a selfishness. It's our, it's our nature. You know, that, 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 that times we, uh, you know, even if we don't speak it, there's times that, uh, that you know, we see somebody doing something, or, uh, you know, and we're, you know, we, 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 have, we have a critical thought. Well, they're, they're just trying to put attention on themselves. They're just trying to be in the spotlight. They're just trying to uh, do, you know, one-up uh, everybody else. And, and we need to understand why should we give extravagantly so that we destroy any thoughts that we have uh, about, uh, you know, what we deserve or, or what somebody else is doing? Uh, and, and to just, you know, if we're all giving extravagantly, uh, we, we won't have uh, what was taking place in that day. Again, Jesus was being exalted. Jesus was being anointed. And the rest of the household was murmuring against Mary. And, 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 and trying to take away from uh, the adoration that was going forth for Jesus that day. 
And so let us, let us how do we destroy the selfish nature? How, how, how do we, we, we give extravagantly? We give, and, and, and anything, anything that we have, we are willing to give and, and want to give so that we don't think, oh, I need more, I, 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 I need more. We, uh, you know, we need to understand that uh, giving extravagantly, uh, how do you, you know, is what destroys selfishness, and selfishness is overcome by living with an open hand. Now, let's, I want you to do something here, all right? Everybody, with both of your hands, make a fist, all right? Just make a fist, all right? And, I, and I, I promise you, if I, if, I keep, if, if, if I make you do this for a whole minute, you're gonna, your, your arms are going to start, uh, uh, you know, because what? If, now open them. You feel relief? Huh? Doesn't it feel better? It doesn't feel better to have open hands. And, and again, that, that's just, a, that's just a, a show of what it means uh, and how to give. We open our lives. You know, we don't, we, don't, we don't clutch ourselves and clutch what we have, and, 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 but, but, to, but to give. And, and, and again, just it, it takes more effort to close our, uh, our, our hands and to close our, our, our fists and, and to keep, to hold on to what we, uh, we have. And, and, but when we let go, what a sense of, of relief there is, really. You know, and, and, and to, uh, to just be able to let go. And so, uh, you know, we need to, you know, that... This is why, why should we give extravagantly? Secondly, because giving blesses and enlarges my heart. Now again, we have to be careful here. This cannot be our motivation, but we need to understand that when we give extravagantly, we're going to want to give more. It, it, you know, it enlarges our heart and our spirit and enlarges our capacity to give more. All right. It, it, again, it, 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 the Lord knows our motives. All right. And, and if, if, if we're giving so that, well, you know, if I give, you know, I'm going to get back more. You know, and, and so we get, it's a, it, it's a very, it's a very fine line there to keep our motives in check. But to, be, to give extravagantly because ble- it, giving blesses and enlarges our heart. Uh, you know, and uh, again, the way, the, the, to, to understand this, the, uh, the Jordan River. The Jordan River flows into to two bodies of water, right? There's the Sea of Galilee, and then there's the Dead Sea, right? And these, they're, 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 they, the contrast between these two bodies of water is, is so vast. Uh, the Sea of Galilee is alive. It's vibrant. There's uh, living creatures. There's fish uh, there. It's refreshing. But the Dead Sea is just so salty. It's the saltiest uh, water uh, there is around the world, and, and the, 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 there's nothing living there. It's, it's fruitless. Uh, uh, and, and, but the difference is the Sea of Galilee has, flows outward as well, where the Dead Sea, it just, you know, the Jordan River flows into it, and there's just nothing there. There's nothing there. And, and, and so, again, we, you know, when, when, when we, God wants to flow into us, and when we give extravagantly, uh, it's, again, we're, we're letting it flow out of us as well. And then lastly, why do I want to give extravagantly? Because giving proves God's power. 